Have you ever considered how significant our words, choices, and actions are on a daily basis? What we say and what we do impacts everyone around us. The beginning chapters of Proverbs share a father's heart for his son, a parent to his child, and the desire for his son to listen to his wise instructions. The father shares how his son can be blessed when he finds wisdom. He shares practical warnings about speech and laziness and the company that he keeps. For us, living out Solomon's Proverbs can only happen with the help of the Holy Spirit. Dependence on God and surrounding ourselves with a sphere of trustworthy people is important. And in Proverbs 6, we read through practical warnings from Solomon. Allow no sleep to your eyes, no slumber to your eyelids. Of course, this does not mean that you must avoid sleep, but it does suggest that too much sleep does not allow for the work that God has called us to do. Next, we read how to go to the ant and observe. And I can tell you from personal experience that not too many summers ago, we had gone away for a weekend and returned to an army of very large black ants all over our counter. They were everywhere. We went into a frenzy attack mode and vacuumed and cleaned for a very long time. These ants are anything but lazy. They are hard workers determined to survive. And Proverbs 6, 6 to 8 tells us to go and observe the ant. Are we being lazy in approaching the work of, word of God? Are we expecting things to just happen? Are we expecting fruit to just appear in our lives? How will that happen if we do not commit to spending time in the word, in prayer, in fellowship with other people? Work is so important, and we were created to glorify God in all that we do. If we listen to the wisdom and instruction found in Proverbs, no matter what our work is, God has called us each to steward what we have. If we don't work, we simply won't have the means to provide and care for those around us. Work is hard, but in Philippians 4, 2, 14, and 16, it's clear we are to do everything without grumbling and arguing. I love the reminder to do everything without complaining as you hold firmly to the word of life. Yes, we need to hold firmly to Jesus. He is the word of life, and the words we read in Proverbs are life-giving. We have a responsibility to work and to commit to him all we do, as it says in Proverbs 16, 3. This verse does not say that I establish my plans. He will. God is sovereign over all things, and that includes our work. This verse does not say exactly how or when God will establish our plans, but we need to trust that he knows what is best and to be faithful and obedient to what he calls us to do. If we just simply talk about work, Proverbs tells us all hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. It's easy to dream about what a job I might like to have, but we're warned those who work with land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies have no sense. Your land that you are working might be raising children, starting your own business, volunteering, leading a company or a student, but you have to work at it. Dreaming about work will not provide, just as the verse says that fantasies have no sense. So don't get me wrong, we all have dreams. I have many more and have lots in my mind, but we must accompany those dreams with action and hold them loosely, knowing God is always in control. The book of Proverbs has a lot to say about what we say. It says to guard our heart and how true this is. Our words are a reflection of our heart. I'm the first to admit, and my family knows, I've spoken unkind words or words that hurt and have exp uh, exposed my unguarded heart. And the only way through this is by acknowledging my behavior and asking for forgiveness. And I'm thankful for their grace. And when I think of how everything flows from our heart, it reminds me of a time we purchased a 10 gallon fish tank for just one little beta fish named Prince. He was like, no, it's not a new adventure. We've had many fish, but this was unique. It had a little light and a filter. And at night, it was actually quite something pretty to see. The filter was clearly there so the water would be clean and provide an optimal living environment for this wee little fish. We were becoming negligent and we weren't changing the filters often, let alone the water and the filter was getting clogged. And I feel this is a very similar thing that happens to us. Our lives get clogged by all of the distractions from the world and we're unable to absorb the wisdom that God has given us clearly. Proverbs is not here by accident. God intended Proverbs to be here for us to apply to our lives. How quickly we can be filled up with the wrong things if we're not caring for our hearts, minds, and souls. We all need grace because we will say and do things that impact others negatively. Remember that gracious words are like a honeycomb. If we could have all oh, just a little more grace and a little more sweetness in our words, what a difference that would make in the lives of others. Remember, above all, get wisdom. The beginning of wisdom is this, get wisdom. Though it costs you all you have, get understanding. Proverbs 4 verse 7.